and we're back. All right, in this video, I am going to be introducing uh, Burp Suite, which is an HTTP proxy. Um, it is extremely useful when you are working, um, trying to figure out how to work with a uh, an HTTP server, um, API, um, HTTPS. Uh, it's just all around super helpful. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do, um, because it is a proxy, you're going to want to be able to set up um, your web browser to be able to utilize it. Um, otherwise, what's going to happen is your requests are just going to go straight to the server and burp doesn't actually get any of the information. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is go to add-ons. Uh, so I opened up Firefox from the menu. Um, after I have Firefox open, I'm going to search for uh, Foxy proxy. And this Foxy proxy standard is the one you're going to want to use. So I'm going to add it to my Firefox. Uh, go ahead and close that. And then I'm going to go over here and I'm going to configure it. Um, so I just click on options and I'm going to add an option for burp. Uh, so we're going to go burp. Um, we're going to leave it on HTTP. Um, you can also set this up. Um, if you were to be using like a socks proxy, you could set up a separate thing for a socks proxy. Um, that would be um, useful potentially with some type of uh, tunnel forwarding on SSH. Just going to throw that out there. Um, but anyways, we're just going to leave it on HTTP. Um, our host name is going to be localhost. So 127001. Um, and the default port that it operates on is 8080. Um, so we're just going to do that and hit save. Um, so now we have that there. So you can just kind of click there and then click to enable burp and it'll send all of your requests to burp. Um, so the first thing we're going to do, uh, open burp. So okay, burp suite. Go ahead and click OK on that. And then I would just go ahead and click close on this. Um, we don't really need to worry about updating for now. Uh, temporary project, use burp defaults and start takes a little bit while it's just loading um, but once you're started up this is what you'll see um, there is a bunch of different tabs um, most of which are extremely helpful but i don't know how much uh, we'll be using them in this ctf um, but feel free to take a look around um, there's also as i've said on the other videos plenty of other tutorials out there on this kind of stuff i'm just kind of doing a high level get you in, get you in the water and just kind of let you try to figure out how to swim. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and enable uh, my burp and I'm just going to browse to, let's say google.com. So HTTP is a protocol that uses a request and response. Um, so here is my request. Um, you'll notice that burp caught the request before it even went to uh, the server. So I have the option to intercept it, make changes, see what I'm doing, and then um, wait for the response. So right now intercept is on. You can also turn it off. Um, I leave it on when I'm trying to troubleshoot something in particular. Um, otherwise you can turn it off and then you can go to your HTTP history and you'll see that there is uh, some stuff here. Um, so you can go here and click on my first get and you'll see that it moved. So we'll click on here and then we'll see our response. Um, so you'll see both sides of it. Um, and I think the issue I have, yeah. The other thing I forgot to do is um, HTTPS requires a certificate to be added. Uh, so the one thing we do need to do is go to our local host. Uh, oh on port 8080, click on your CA certificate and hit save. 
And then we're going to go to preferences, privacy and security. And then we are going to find, did I miss it? Where's our certificates? Oh, I didn't go down far enough. All right, here's our view certificate. So we're gonna go ahead and import and we're going to import that cert that we just had. Um, go ahead and check to identify websites. We don't need to worry about the email for now. Um, and then click okay. And now if we go back to our google.com, it will load and you'll see that it's showing that it is trusted. Um, but if you look at it, it is going to actually be using the port swigger, um, certificate. So it's actually going through this proxy. And as you can see, there's a lot more information than what we first had. Um, so some other useful things, uh, if you wanted to, so here's like our main page and our response where we got the Google page. Um, say you wanted to mess around with this a little bit more. Um, you could send this over. So if you right click, you have options to send it to different places. Um, Intruder is going to be a um, place where you can do like brute forces or some type of payload attack. Um, basically, if I wanted to change the different... Uh, if I was doing a login and I want to try a bunch of different passwords, um, you could go here and configure. Uh, I can clear this and say, hey, if I wanted to use this one parameter and do an attack against it, I would use sniper, which is a single attack there, and then go to your payloads, and then you could add a um, word list in here. Um, repeater is super helpful if you want to... Um, send a request and get the response back and then make changes to it quite often. Um, this is kind of where you can tinker with it manually. Um, then you also have decoder, which is helpful if you were to get back something in like base 64 or some type of encoding and you wanted to decode it, um, URL encoding, base 64, HTML, all that stuff, it will be able to translate it. Um, and it's extremely helpful when you're trying to figure out what something is inside of a request or response. Um, compare, if you have two things, you can compare them and see how they changed. Um, so yeah, there is a whole lot here. I don't want to take up too much more time, um, but go ahead and play around with this. Um, it is probably one of the, it, it's, it's a tool that I use at work um, when I am troubleshooting uh, an API. Um, and it might be helpful for some of you in your day-to-day -day jobs as well.